Shalom, Barak de Yahweh, Baal Shem, Yahweh Shai, Baal Shem, Kadash. All praises and glories definitely do, especially in the times we're living in. But respects to the apostles and others of Great Millstone, and to all the brothers out there doing the work, I say Shalom. All right, the title of this lesson will be The Earth is Given into the Hands of the Wicked. Where and who is he? So that's what we're going to do. Uh, there's a lot of information. We're not going to cover it all, people, but we'll give you quite a lot. All right? So you'll see how, you know, the uh, the scriptures, the precepts, you know, the dots all connect. All right? Showing you who the wicked is. And again, this isn't told to you. This isn't shown to you in your churches. All right? or in uh, your schools, okay? This isn't given to you over your television sets, over the media, all right? You understand, okay? And really, you know, the biggest secret on this earth is not only who the wicked is, but who the Israelites are. And again, they're not going to tell you because they're not going to tell upon themselves. But yet, you will know them by what? Their fruits. You understand that? You will know them by what? Their actions. Okay? And all you have to do is look at the actions of Esau Edom, the white man. All right? And the scriptures are going to tell you. All right? All right, that it's Esau. And it's going to tell you who Esau is. Okay? By what? By the fruit of their actions by their history, okay? So there's no getting around this. You understand that, all right? And you don't need them to validate who they are, okay? Some of them are already telling you that, yeah, they're Edom because they're proud, all right? Uh, and the Lord hates pride, okay? Uh, but nobody's more proud than the Edomites, and you read that in Obadiah. So anyway, you know, they're not going to get up in front of a podium, okay? They're not going to get up in front of a microphone, and they're not going to tell you that they're the Edomites in general, all right? They're not going to do that, just like they're not going to tell you who the Israelites are. And again, we don't need them to. We don't need their validation because the scriptures tell us that. The curses in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, tell you that. And then, of course, <laughs> you know, the tribes are all broken down, okay? They're all broken down, okay? So we know who we are, okay? We don't need their validation. And it's also backed up in circular history, who the ten tribes are, all right, of the northern kingdom, the Indian tribe. We also know that, you know, the southern tribes coming out of West Africa, and no, they're not African. Nobody's African, nobody... You're not Africans, okay? The Africans hate your guts, okay? They sold you onto the Arabs, onto the Edomite, the Grecians, okay? You understand that? So you're not a Hamite, okay? You know how redundant you sound when you say that you know, you're in uh, Egyptology, you're in Kemet. So you're saying that you're a Hamite, that you're an African. So what did you do? You had yourself in captivity for over 400 years? Hmm? In the land of Mizoram called Egypt, which was renamed by the Edomites? You see how redundant that sounds? It'll tell you in the Bible dictionary on the ham who his sons are. Okay? But not the Negroes. It will tell you that as well. You know why? Because you're Israelites. And the Israelites didn't all run into West Africa after the fall of Jerusalem of the southern kingdom. We went into all nations. If you people know your history, all right, which you clearly don't, 
you would know that there were disporas, dispersions, okay, a scattering of Israelites throughout. Okay? You would understand how if someone didn't live in Jerusalem, in Israel, and they lived outside of it, but they were the seed of Israel, and they didn't grow up under the law, statutes, and commandments, okay, due to their mothers and fathers, right? And that would be known as the wild olive tree that we read about in Romans, the 11th chapter. All right, so again, you know, that, that cuts, you know, uh, you know, uh, vocab, all right, in his work, placement theology. You understand that? Because, again, it's, you know, it's talking about, you know, them who are Israelites, all right, but didn't, you know, were not, you know, born and raised in, uh, in Israel, in Jerusalem. Okay, so you understand? So they, you know, uh, were following, you know, the ways and customs of the heathen. So again, when you go back in history at that time and stuff like that, you know, they were known as Hellenists, all right? Because they were following the ways and customs of the heathen, okay? But over time, that changed from being Hellenists to being called Gentiles. And we were scattered into the Gentile heathen nations by dispersion, okay, by scattering. And, and this stuff goes back prior to the fall of Jerusalem. And then you had that happen. So you had more scattering, more dispersion. You also had, remember, let's not forget, the split between the northern and the southern kingdom. And remember that some of the northern stayed with the southern kingdom, if you didn't know that, and wound up going into West Africa. Okay? This is why you need to know your history, all right? Now, it wasn't all of you from that went into West Africa, no. Okay, you understand? Because Ephraim is the, uh, the second in charge behind Judah. They are the head tribe of the northern kingdom of the ten Indian tribes. You know them as Puerto Ricans. Prior to that, you know them as Arawaks and Tainos. Okay, which they were named that by what? The oppressors, starting with, you know, uh, the Spaniards. Okay, when uh, Cristobal Colon, a.k.a. Columbus, came in. You understand? All right. So, anyway. All right, that's enough of that nonsense. All right. So, the earth was given into the hands of the wicked. All right, that was given to them by default. Because we fell away. Okay. You understand that? If you go to what? Uh, what is that? Genesis, I think. What is that? The sixth chapter there. All right, right around the fourth verse. All right. Uh, and I think you get into that word. Uh, fallen. All right. It gets into the word Nepal, which means fallen. We're the fallen ones. And we fell because we got into the heathen women. Right, and we were known as the sons of God originally. So this is way prior before uh you know Abraham, before uh Isaac, and before Jacob, whose name later would be changed to Israel. You understand? So there was a line, a righteous line, a seed, all right, that Israel comes from, and we were known as the sons of God. And again, the earth was broken down into three parts, the sons of God, all right, the sons of the wicked, and the sons of man, all right? And so there's your 18 nations. You understand that? Mm -hmm. There are your 18 nations right there, all right? And you can go to the table of nations, all right, in Genesis uh, chapter 10, you're not going to find white, you're not going to find black, you're not going to find yellow, you're not going to find, you know, orange and red and whatever, have you crayon colors. That's a creation of Esau, a social construct going back to Johann Blumenbach, who created that. To further separate classifying the nations, the, the, the Israelites, 
as being black, being brown, all right? The Chinese were called yellow. You understand? The Japanese were called yellow, whatever. You understand, people, you get the point. And eventually, these people named themselves white in 1681. Prior to that, calling themselves Europeans or calling themselves after the lands that they conquered throughout history. All right? Like Roman general Scipio Africanus naming the continent of Africa after him. America being named after an Edomite, America Vespucci. You understand, people? All right? So the earth was given into the hands of the wicked by default. Because, again, originally... The earth was created for our sakes, right? Go here. And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord, of all thy creatures, so the Lord sees us as creatures. Remember, we're his creation. Of him come we all. And the people also whom thou hast chosen. Who did the Lord choose? The sons of God. Who would later, you know, after Jacob is born, his name would be changed to Israel, the Israelites. That's who he had, right? That's who pertained to, right? Covenants, Right? The law, the promises, you know, you know, the adoption, everything. Okay? Is on to the Israelites, right? Not only the first covenant, but the second covenant is also with the nation of Israel, with the Negro Latino Native American. As we read in uh, Jeremiah, the 31st uh, chapter, and you start at the 31st verse, read down to like the 34th verse. You also read the exact same thing in Hebrews, the 8th chapter, right, starting around the 8th verse and read down to the 10th verse, okay? Where it's first talking about both the northern and the southern kingdom, and then as the 12 tribes as a whole, all right, and how, you know, the, uh, the real difference um, of the, the second covenant Compared to the first is that we're going to have the laws, statutes, and commandments placed into our inner parts. All right? We're going to be programmed that way. And that's going to happen when we get our new bodies. You understand? People, all right? Those new immortal extraterrestrial bodies. Okay? You know, when we shall all be changed, you know, talking about the elect, when we meet up in the air in the clouds, which is a metaphor for the chariots. And we shall all be changed within a twinkling of an eye. All right? All right. So you see, all right, all this I have spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sake. So you see, the earth, the world, was made for the sake of the sons of God, for the Israelites, his chosen people. All right? He simply created the other nations. To serve us. And again, that's part of your uh, inheritance. Okay? That's part of your birthright. Which you can read about in Genesis 2740. Maybe I'll take you over there after this. All right? Let me just finish this. As for the other people, which also come Adam, right? So he's talking about Esau, Edom, the tabernacles of Edom, plus the other 16 heathen nations. Thou hast said that they are nothing, but be like unto spittle, and has likened the abundance of them unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. There you go. All right, we're going to end this here. We'll be right back with part two. All right. Shalom.